I can't do what most of our team does. And so I need them just as much as they need me. And so that is kind of a, you know, the mix and the, the balance they create in an organization. So welcome to the Better People Podcast. I'm Margaret Urich. And in today's episode, we're talking with Chris Bailey, President and CEO of Bailey Brands Consulting. So welcome, Chris. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure oh, to be here. Thrilled. Yeah, thrilled to have you with us. So Chris, I would love to ask you to just, for you to do your own introduction for our audience, let them know what you think would be most helpful for them to know about you, your career, your company. Um, I think it always comes, it's always better when it comes from you. Well, um, my name is Chris Bailey, and I'm president and CEO of Bailey Brand Consulting. Um, we, our mantra of what the way we think about ourselves is we make brands matter. And the idea is really to help work with our clients closely to understand what's different about their business and to really try to build the value of their brands to ultimately differentiate them in the marketplace. All right. Awesome. And so when did you start Bailey Brands Consulting? This is always a tricky question, but it was 1985. I was actually two years old, but uh, yeah, <laughs> um, and no one ever believes me when I say that. But um, you know, that was we were much more of a sort of a design uh, centric organization at that point in time, and we've really evolved over time to be um, much more strategic. And so, strategy is really kind of the tip of the spear for us um, in terms of getting started with many of our clients and it's you know we do things for everything from voice of customer or just really understanding the marketplace to activation of the you know the activation and delivering the the brand to the consumer or customer so it's really kind of research to reality oh neat all right so if i did my math correctly company is 39 years old it is that's a long time to be president and CEO of a company. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> and, but but in a commend, in a very commendable way because it's hard work. It's tough. Um, so I'm curious, and you alluded to already that you looked one way when you started, and you look a different way now, right? But I'm sure in these 39 years, there's been a lot of change that is that has occurred for you and for your organization. Um, What's your philosophy around change or what's your mindset around change? Well, it, it's, an interesting, it's, it's an interesting challenge to think about change. So sometimes you do it without even knowing it and, and you adapt. And then sometimes you do it because you better do it. And, um, you know, we've experienced in our business, um, everything's really become digitized. And so we, we went from kind of a... You want to think of it as an analog start to now more of a, a digital start or a digital world. And the the reality of that is, is that, you know, the, the work that we do has got to be a lot different. You got to think about it differently. Um, the the mean, you know, the, 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 the media, the, the kinds of areas that a lot of the work that we do and how it gets exposed is different. Um, there's a lot more noise and a lot more a lot more channels, a lot, a lot more everything. Um, so it, it, it's it, it's pretty dramatic. And 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 the other part that I would also add to that is, you know, things the value of things change. Um, so we always think about you know, one of the things that we really talk to our team about is really remember what a client values and really get to know and understand what they value, because. Um, if you don't stay close to that, we may be focused on the wrong idea for them. And, you know, it, 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 many of the things that we used to do are very commoditized now. And so they're really not in something that is in our wheelhouse necessarily anymore. Um, but, you know, it, which means you just have to adapt to do the things that are really relevant and where we are today. So you've mentioned adapt a couple of times and, and being adaptable is a much needed skill these days. Um, how do you support your team with being adaptable or how do you create um, that skill with your employees? Well, many of them help me. <laughs> the 
they, okay. they, 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 you know, they, they just came out of school and what they learned is a lot different than what I learned. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so we can, we can all kind of share things together, but, you know, this is a completely, uh, you know, most of the pit people we're hiring today are digital natives and none of us, <laughs> me, I'm not a digital native. I can tell you that. Um, but, you know, so there's, they don't even quite even know what our business was like when we started. Um, many of them weren't even born when we were started, but it's, that's just the reality, but it, that's the great thing about having, you know, multi-generations in an organization because they can all kind of provide a lot of different perspectives. And I think the diversity of perspectives is really critical because everybody gets smarter. Absolutely. So you mentioned the value of the client and asking your employees to really be in touch with, if I understood correctly, what the client's asking for, Mm -hmm. which then understanding what the client's asking for is the opportunity for your organization, you know, at, at the base level to meet that need, right? That value. But I would think that creates opportunity for innovation for you as well, then. Very much so. I, you know, this is a, I always tell uh, our team, this is a relationship driven business. Um, many of the people that we work with today, we started out when they were associate brand managers or just they were just starting in their career. And now they're running companies and um or or they're in the c-suite and so what's what's great about that is we get to bounce around with them and follow them in their career and uh also that just helps us you know grow our base but the 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 piece that's really important to that is the the relationship part of it because you're staying with them as they're changing their job you're helping them either either find a new job helping them uh you know consider what what their options t- really are um and then when they get somewhere new we we kind of investigate it together so it's a it becomes a really interesting uh idea that's awesome so we had talked earlier about um your team and your focus on really um building building a strong team which i believe the word that you used mm-hmm. so first let me ask you how large is your team now um, we usually hover between about 35 and 40, depending on what we're doing. All right. So it's a decent size. And I understand that you have a hybrid work environment. So you're in the office some days together. Some days you're right. you're working remotely. A number of you travel. So, you know, that adds complexity to the, the makeup of the team. Um, how do you define a strong team? Well, it, 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 First of all, when you think about team and, and, um, we, we try to get, uh, everyone to feel that they are on all one big team, one big Bailey team. And that's something we're continually working at because we have individuals who are assigned to specific clients and, and, you know, you know, in some cases, some people are working on all of the pieces of business that we're on. And then some are specifically exclusive to one or two. So it really depends on them, but we try to get everyone to feel like they're part of the Bailey team, not part of this ex client or that client, um, which is critical because people need to kind of be able to see and understand other parts of the business so that they can be deployed elsewhere when needed. Um, You know, I think if you, we use the boys in the boat metaphor, if you're familiar with that, you know, love that book. And, and um, you know, it, it, that was a, uh, you know, a, a ragtag group of people and um, that kind of came together and they were focused on one goal. They were focused on a, on a result. And when we think about that, we try to really have people that are results driven. Um, they understand what what we're trying to do, what the client's trying to do, and um, really kind of drive towards what that goal is. And yeah, that's that's an important thing, and 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 so when if everybody when they're on that team, they all kind of know where they're trying to go, and 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 they have each other's backs, and you know uh, trust is a huge part of that, and to be able to you know um, function as an organization to get to those um, big goals that you want to hit, you need to start with that trust. People need to feel like they can speak up. 
They need to feel like they can, uh, they're safe. They can say what they feel. And, you know, there's some conflict in there time to time, but, you know, we're looking for people that are very committed and very, you know, accountable and, and but it really begins with the trust. Yeah. So, and, and you're spot on with that, you know, in the trust. And I love that you uh, referred to trust being the ability to be vulnerable, right? The ability to say what you need to say and to feel safe in doing so. Um, how do you think you've, what have you done as the president and CEO to uh, to help foster this building of trust, really? Like, is there any actions that you've taken Um like on your part, uh, I hate to say policies and procedures, right? But some something that you've put in place within the organization that has supported the development of growth, and I mean the development of trust and and the psychologically safe culture. Yeah, I think that that's something that we have to do as leaders in an organization. We have to we have to keep our door open. You know, we have to keep mm-hmm. we, we have to make it comfortable for people to come and ask you a question. Um, and and I think that uh, that becomes challenging for individuals that when they first arrive, they're kind of like, he's the boss or he's the owner or whatever, you know. And and I try to break that down. I'm 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 a human just like you are, you know. And 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 we try to keep it, uh, you know, we try to keep our the organization kind of flat minded. I mean, we all have titles and roles, but you know, we want. We want individuals to be able to kind of communicate with each other and and to be able to ask questions because we we have to function in across uh, you know across a variety of things and, and cross functional. Um, let's say I, you, you said about being vulnerable. I could I could keep my life private, or I could you know I can let some people know that what what goes on in my world. Um, you know I you know. My my wife went through breast cancer twice, and I have no problem telling anybody about that, you know. And you know, I, you know, so you try to put yourself out there so that other people can kind of feel that you're not yeah. a private person, and you know, he's he's a regular person. Yeah, he's a regular person. He has issues. He has problems. There's things that he's dealing with as a human, um, right? And and when you're able to share that, that does go a long way to helping. T- to build those connections, which we all know we people want at work. They want to feel connected. Yeah. And I think I think the other thing I do try to do is I try to, you know, if I'm working on something and I and I I go and I ask others, what do you think? Because one, I want them to tell me what they think because I think they can probably point out something that I missed. Um I'm not perfect. I'm not I, I'm not the authority on it. I but I I and I have ideas, but I I think um, through collaboration that when we come together, you know, one plus one equals a whole lot more than two, and we can. Yeah. And, and and the best stuff happens when it gets spun up, and you know, you could almost think of it as a jazz, you know, quartet. You know, the music gets sort of passed around, and it gets cooler and cooler as it goes around, and they build on. Yeah. They build on things. Yeah, that's a great analogy. I love that. Especially in a in a design environment that you're in, yeah. right? A creative environment. Um, I think that's really helpful to to have that mindset and to take that approach. Yeah. So, um, talk to me about, and, and I guess you have been all along, but relationships, the relationships you have with your employees, the relationships that your employees have with your clients. Um, What's that look like for you? So, you know. Um, you guys are in the HR space, so you know what it's like to have to train people. And so, um, y- you're you're better off if you can um, build a team that can grow and that they can advance as individuals, and they can stick around. I've got some people that have been here um, twenty, thirty years that have been uh, been with us. Um, you know, we we've got a pretty a substantial group of people that have been with us for a good chunk of time. And that creates a lot of continuity for us. And that also creates a lot of continuity for our clients. Because when, you know, they have people that leave their office, we can fill in the blanks and also help train somebody that they hire. 
um, you know, on their business. And, and, and so I think that the, you know, piece of value that we can bring to the party that is, you know, we're not charging them for it. We're just helping them with it. We're helping them with something. Um, but, you know, I think there's a, there's a continuity aspect that is, is really strong there. I, on the other hand, I love it when we get new people and, and they bring new ideas and they, and they bring new ways. So, so it's, it's a blend for sure. Um, you know, but I think it's the, the people that we try to bring in, we try to bring in with the same type of mindset that we are, where we're trying to solve problems and, um, and that they're, they want it, they want to be part of something. I mean, for me, when I think about what makes a great organization is, you know, the people that are there really want to be there. They really want to be there. It's not like I'm just doing this and I'm on, I'm on autopilot. We, we can't be that way where we're, that's, that's not, uh, it's not allowable by, for, with what we do for our client, you know, for what we have to do it for uh, our clients and what we have to do to uh, do our business. So you need engagement. You need full engagement all the time. Full engagement. Yeah. So you said you have a number of employees that have been with you for some, it sounded like almost the whole time you've, you know, since you started, basically. Uh, pretty close. I, there's a couple of people that have been around, you know, but I would say we've, we, we've had, um, you know, I'd say we've got probably, uh, a, you know, 30 to 40% of our team has been around for much of their career, if not all of it. All right. So that's that's great. And it does help with that continuity, both within your organization and for your clients. If I were to ask them, and, and so this is the big question, because I'm you know, going to ask you one question that applies to a number of people. But if I were to ask them why they've stayed, why they've spent their whole career potentially with you and your organization, what do you think they would say? I think they, you know, this, this is a... Uh, this is an organization that's been built by the people, by the team. And so mm -hmm. I think they really like each other. They want to work together. Um, they enjoy working together. You know, it, there's it, in, in the, the book, good, in, good to great. You know, it, it's one of the things that they talk about is that, that some of the people that are in some of the executives teams that, that uh, they interviewed. They just really enjoyed being together. They really love, you know, it, they, 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 uh, they, they, they can fight like cats and dogs. And, and, but at the end of the day, they can sort of say, okay, we're, we, we want to be there. And so, uh, you know, I think, um, we have kind of a diverse kind of work and, you know, client mix, people like that. Um, and, you know, we've had we've had people that have come here, and we're not we're not for everybody, but but uh, I don't know that any organization is. But but you know, I think what's when you can find people that can work together and and grow together, then I think that that's a really positive thing. Yeah, I loved your answer. This organization was built by the people, right? And I think that's awesome. And now, as you were talking, I'm like. This is why he's talking about relationships, right? This is why some of our earlier conversations were about relationships, because what I took from your response there, it it's the relationships that built your company, and it's the relationships that keep it going. It's the relationships that that drive everything. Yeah, it's you know, if if you think about it just from a relationship standpoint, mm -hmm. we get referrals from clients, we get clients that take us somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Same same idea. We got people that you know. Yeah, either worked here, they had to move, or, or they they left for personal reasons. But they 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 refer people over to us, um, you know. So it's that's a that's a positive thing. So you know, and and the, and the world is extremely small. So you, you know, it, 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 if you if you end up that, that you're a uh, you're not a great place to be, then you know that'll happen. So I'm going to ask you this question. You might not be able to answer it because I'm getting the sense that for you, creating this organization and building relationships and, and creating a culture where relation, strong relationships get built, it seems like it's almost been organic for you and, and maybe came natural for you. But is there any one thing that you can think of that you did to really help foster 
this relationship building? Um, you know, listen, I that's that's part of my role, um, and and that's a, it's a big part of my role is to 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 be um, the flag bearer for the relationship building. Um, I think one of the things that we've said, you know, chemistry is important um, for for people, and and chemistry with our clients is important. Um, and and I think you know if I if I think about what I've done to kind of help foster that, I I look at it as I I can't do what most of the, most of our team does, and and so I need them just as much as they need me. And so that that is kind of a you know the mix and and the and and the and the, the balance that they they create in an organization. That's great. So Chris, I really appreciate this conversation. It's been really wonderful, and I um, I think there's so many nuggets in there that our our listeners are going to be able to take and and learn from. Um, I have just one last question for you. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> yeah. No. 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 It's it's a good one. Uh, no. But what would you say has been your greatest life lesson as president and CEO of an organization? Oh boy. Um, life lesson. You know, I I, I think that. You know, we're um, to, you know we've we've gone through a bunch of interesting times. So I kind of get I, I kind of start with that, um, and I think each one of them created uh, some interesting moments of learning. And because I didn't go to school for most of what I do, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, and so. Um, you know, nobody told you that when you'd start out that um, a bank would look at you sort of almost sideways and, and you know, and, and, and I'll, I'll tell you about, I'll, I'll kind of articulate the relationship idea from that. You know, when we would talk to different banks, you know, most of the time, the bank would come and tell you, okay, well, here's all the things that happen when you guys do something wrong. You know, we're going to come do this. We're, yeah. The, the, these are these are all they, they give us they give you all of the out of bounds rules and what what you know is going to happen if you don't pay something or you don't do x or y or z and so they give you all the stuff that you think like boy why do i even want to talk to these guys but i have no choice you know but as time is built you know and i and i you know for a, for a very long time i had to sign personally for everything and so that puts a lot of pressure on you then you hit like 2008 and you think we're going, you know, the world's going to end, and we we literally um, are the the bank that we had a relationship with there went into went into a problem, and so we had to kind of scurry and find find another uh, another uh, another financial institute. And then then the next thing you hit is a pandemic, and you know you think you're going off a cliff, and so uh, I, I think I think if anything, I've learned to be resilient. And I've tried to say to myself, man, if this is going to end, it's going to, it's going to take a while to end. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I think resiliency is really kind of, and, and being a, a problem solver and trying to look at something and say, okay, well, if that's the problem or if that's the issue, let's figure it out. And, you know, you can usually, you know, with the right team, you can figure out most things. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a great life lesson. I think resiliency also, uh, the other, you know, kind of word for the year, um, you know, along with change, but that's really a big part of change. And that's where we started this podcast, but being able to be resilient, um, great lesson to have learned, Chris. So thank you so much for your time with us today. We really appreciate it. And uh, look, yeah, look forward to talking again. <laughs>